Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. I guess you could call this homemade because it's homemade. Anyways, 2 to the power x times 3 to the power x cubed equals 6. And we've done a similar problem before. I think it was 3 to the x squared. And that gave us a quadratic equation in one of the methods. So is this going to give us a cubic equation? Let's find out. I'll be presenting two methods. And let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to go ahead and ln both sides. If you ln 2 to the x times 3 to the x cubed, then you get ln 6. And when you log or ln a product, you basically can write it as a sum of two ln's. And then using the power rule, you can bring these down. And that becomes x times ln 2 plus x cubed times ln 3 equals ln 6. This is basically what makes it a cubic equation. How do you solve a cubic equation? There's something called a cubic formula. Let me show you a little bit how this works. I'm going to go ahead and write the ln 3 here as x cubed's coefficient. And then ln 2 is the coefficient of x. And then I have a constant term. Let's leave it on the right hand side for now because we're going to use the cubic formula. I want my x cubed to be monic. So let's divide everything by ln 3. If you divide by ln 3 here, here, and here, you're going to get x cubed plus ln 2 over ln 3 multiplied by x equals ln 6 over ln 3. ln 2 over ln 3, I'm sorry, not multiplied by. Now, how do you use the cubic formula? Well, if you think about a plus b cubed minus 3ab a plus b, in other words, you expand this using binomial theorem and then subtract the two terms in the middle. That gives the first plus the last term, which is actually the sum of two cubes. This is also uh, something that you can use to factor sum of two cubes, but there's already a formula that we all, uh, use a lot, like a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. This is where this formula comes from. But we're not interested in that right now. We want to work with the cubic formula. So let's call this x and then co compare these two equations. In order for this to be true for all x values or for the x values we're looking for, basically the coefficient of x's must be the same. So these are two polynomials that are identical basically. So the coefficient of x is ln 2 over ln 3, and on the right-hand side, I mean, uh, at the bottom, it's negative 3ab. So this should be equal from here. ab becomes ln 2, negative ln 2 over 3 ln 3. That's ab. And then the constant term should equal the constant term, which is ln 6 over ln 3. So a cubed plus b cubed should equal ln 6 over ln 3. Okay. So we kind of got a system of equations. Uh, but one of them is cubic, so let's go ahead and cube both sides here. That's going to give us a cubed b cubed equals negative ln 2 over 3 ln 3 cubed. I'm just going to write it as something cubed for now. And then from the other equation, I can isolate b cubed and write it as ln 6 over ln 3 minus a cubed. Now you can go ahead and take this and substitute here. And guess what? That's going to give you a quadratic equation in a cubed. And then by setting a cubed equal to c, uh, you'll get a quadratic in c, and then try to solve it. And let me t tell you, um, show you what that quadratic is going to look like. It's going to look like this. And this should be cubed, I think. OK. And that quadratic can be solved with a qu uh, quadratic formula. Good luck with that. Uh, it's going to be a little complicated. But this is too painful, don't you think? It is. So let's go ahead and take a look at the following. I'm going to go back to where I got my cubic equation, maybe to this one. I'll go, I'll go back to that one, or maybe this one. No, I don't think I need to divide both sides. OK, so let's go ahead and write uh, the equation as ln 3 x cubed plus ln 2 x equals ln 6. Hopefully, you do see that there is an obvious solution. And you can also tell by the original equation. If you look at it, I'm pretty sure you guessed one of the solutions. 
okay but our goal is to find all three solutions right well at least to find out what's going on with the others so did you find the obvious solution in this case it is x equals 1 why is x equals 1 an obvious solution let's talk about it if you replace x with 1 you get ln 3 plus ln 2 equals ln 6 which is true so x equals 1 works but how will you how would you find it like would you guess right away well if you look at the original problem I think it's kind of obvious that x equals 1 works right so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna take our equation and manipulate this in such a way that we can factor out x minus 1 so I'm gonna write it like this and then I'll subtract x squared and then of course I have to add it because it's not there and then of course this needs to be followed by this so far we have x minus 1 as a factor and then this will be followed by this and then of course by this because that's the one of the terms and finally this is equal to ln 6 let's go ahead and arrange this a little bit first of all these two can be combined into ln 6 so I can write this as ln 3 x cubed minus ln 3 x squared plus ln 3 x squared minus ln 3 x plus ln 6 times x minus ln 6 equals 0. Now when you go ahead and take out uh, some terms like ln 3 times x squared, this is going to give you x minus 1. When you take out ln 3 times x, this is going to give you x minus 1. And finally when you take out ln 6, you're going to get x minus 1. Notice that x minus 1 is a factor which also shows one more time that x equals 1 is a solution. And then this gives you the quadratic factor. Don't worry, I'm going to close the parentheses and this is going to be your quadratic. Great. So we already know x equals 1. Let's go ahead and focus on this quadratic and how do you solve it? Before you solve the quadratic, you should always look at this discriminant. Discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. But take a look at this. ln 6 can be written as ln 3 plus ln 2, right? from the product rule and this becomes ln 3 squared minus 4 times ln 3 squared minus 4 times ln 3 times ln 2. Notice that this is negative and you're subtracting a positive term so this is going to be less than 0 which means there are no real solutions. Could we find them? Yes, use the quadratic formula and evaluate the complex solutions. Left as an exercise. <laughs> Something to hate, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, which is going to be a little bit more fun. I don't know. You'll decide. So this is my original equation. I'm going to write it as 2 times 3. And then I want to go ahead and put the 2's together and the 3's together. Bring the uh, 3 to the x cubed over here. So that's going to be 3 to the power 1 minus x cubed. And then notice that 1 minus x cubed contains x minus 1. So we can go ahead and write it like this. 3 to the power x minus 1 times negative x squared minus x minus 1. Remember, when we factor the difference of two cubes, everything is positive, but when you negate it, everything has got to be negative. Now, you can go ahead and take out x minus 1, knowing that x equals 1 is a solution, of course, because this is raising both sides to the power 1 over x minus 1. And now we got a kind of like a nicer equation, simpler. Now, we want to let's raise both sides to the power of negative 1 because that negative just bothers me, OCD. And we get the following. 2 to the power of negative 1 is 1 half. And now how do you solve this problem? <laughs> Just ln both sides. Easy, right? ln 3 to the power x squared plus x plus 1 equals ln 1 half. And then this you can bring to the front. And then by division, you're going to get the following. Right? That's it. And quadratic formula will give you the solution. Of course, x equals 1 is a solution. We want to find the other solutions. But how do you find the solutions? Are there any solutions? Well, first of all, this is something to remember. x squared plus x squared uh, plus 1 is always greater than 0. This is a parabola that doesn't have an x intercept because its discriminant is negative. For all x, right? For real x. And then notice that this expression is less than 0. Hmm. Something that has to be positive equals something negative. No way. Or you can call this expression negative k, where k is positive. Then you get the following k is positive remember so this expression is obviously greater than x squared plus x plus 1 because k is positive and of course this is greater than 0 so this is always positive therefore it can never be equal to 0 therefore no real solutions from there either and 
This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.